Hey guys, Mike here. Um, this is going to be a video series on building a composite tailwheel. Um, and it's going to be a series on actually making it from scratch using very engineered products and using known methods of assembly. And um, what that'll do for us is give us a predictable outcome. We're going to build a composite tail spring that's going to be straight. It's going to be, when it flexes, it's not going to twist. It's going to um, be extremely stable. And it's going to last a very long time. And it is going to be extremely lightweight. I have built up a formula that I believe will be the lightest weight possible for a tail. I do not think you will find one lighter than what I'm going to show you. Um, I have built long bows and recurves for many years and I have many notebooks full of all sorts of combinations for making many many mistakes that cost thousands of dollars so this is sort of a accumulation of all that experience and instead of a bow uh, we're gonna make a tail spring so this is we need to have a pattern okay a pattern really gives us consistency in our mold and Nothing about what we're going to do here is complex. Nothing is um, hard to the point where an average guy can't do it. You're definitely going to be able to do this, and it's going to be pretty reasonable to do it. Um, we're just going to—we're not going to use typical composites that you're used to in the aircraft industry, though. Okay, it's going to be a totally different ball game. I'm going to show you a bowl. This was my first successful bowl. This. I probably spent five or six thousand dollars in mistakes to get to this point and I was a teenager when I finally made a bowl that worked and basically I mean this is cherry right here uh, it's got a maple core and it's got forty thousandths glass uh, thirty thousandths on this side thirty thousandths on this side and you can see this is a long bowl um, that's a uh, bacote it's seamless you can't even feel the joint and I'll show you how to achieve that kind of thing on a tailspring so uh, you can see here this you know that's a mistake I made and you know you get better over a course of many years you start to fine-tune the process but what we're interested in is not the bowl or the handle or anything we're interested in this limb and we're interested in creating a spring okay let me show you the last bowl I built before I gave up bowl building This was, I made this for myself. I got so sick of building bows. <clears throat> I've sold them to some pretty cool people that hunt out west, pretty hardcore stuff. So, uh, this is what happens over many years of perfecting a craft. So, um, that's the handle. This is, uh, it was Cocobolo. These are um, very, very engineered fiberglass strands in here. This is Bubenga. That yellow stripe is Osage Orange. Okay. This limb is Osage Orange. Okay. You can see how that is cut. Now, the reason why this is, these are very special laminations because remember, when you twist, this happens to be a reflex deflex long bolt. Our tail spring is going to be very similar. Okay. Um, it's very important how you select wood because when this flexes, okay. You don't want, you want it to just bend down. You don't want it to bend to the side, right? Okay, so if we're gonna use a composite that involves wood, uh, we wanna make sure that we choose laminations that are very straight and stable, okay? So you can see that the, you will not see glue joints. And, and when we're done, you're gonna, you're gonna figure out how we can laminate a tail spring um, without having any glue joints whatsoever. So it'll be flawless and it'll last many, 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 many years and many hard landings. So we set that up. What you're gonna to wanna to do is build a pattern. So um, this is a 20 inch piece of plywood. It's half inch, okay? I started out by cutting a, a rectangle and I made sure it was perfectly flat, okay? I made a mark at, I actually made a mark over here knowing that I'd round this out um, and end up with a flat spot. So from this end to here, perfectly flat is seven and a quarter inches. Okay. Remember, I'm going to mount that on that airplane and I need it straight. Okay. That's the goal. Um, 
that's going to give us some longevity. We don't want issues with it rocking. We want to make sure it's very flat. And then it's, I'm introducing a very gentle curve. Okay. So from that flat spot to this end, to this where that curve is, is an inch and a quarter. So that's an inch and a quarter drop. 20 inches, inch and a quarter drop. Seven and a quarter of flat spot. From this end to here at 16 inches, although this looks curved and it's very gentle, I put a flat spot here. It's just so slight that you really can't see it. This flat spot is an inch and a half wide. All I did was I started out straight, I bandsawed on a rough shape, I took it on here, and I gently, okay, just did this. Once I achieved an arc, I brought it up, ground a little flat spot, then I went back and just gently feathered it. So this is perfectly flat right there in that spot, just in that little area, okay? Now our tail spring is shorter than 20 inches, but when we do this layup, this will all make sense later, we want a little bit bigger, okay? Um, and no matter what, the most cost effective, and you'll find out why, has to be uh, 18 inch lamination. So the laminations we're gonna put in here are gonna be 18 inches. Uh, however, the pattern is gonna be 20 inches, okay? So. We'll, uh, we'll get cracking on that, and the next step is going to be using this pattern to start making the mold, and I'll show you how to do that next.